Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Tundra Cast, and today we're going to be going back over all the playoff games that's happened in the couple, last couple of days, so we're continuing our playoff recap series, and today with me I've got Shaden. What's up? Uh, Dank Boy returns. Hello. And our new guy, Jay. Yo. Alright, so I think we're going to start off with the Isles and Pens here. Um, yeah. Uh, on the Islanders side, I think Shay, you wanted to say something about them? I just don't think they're the same team as we saw from the bubble. They're allowing in too many chances, especially up close. And, I mean, that's not really Barry Trot talking. You got to shut it down. You got to trap the opponents. And whatever shots, you know, from the point or wherever, you block. And they're not really doing that this year. And, you know, one thing I'm really mad about – well, not mad about. One thing I'm kind of concerned about is the fact that, uh, you know, Sorokin was in game one. He played – fantastic then he played Vlarimov in games two three and uh he didn't play well and so I mean Sorokin's getting to start tonight which is good and if the Isles win he's their guy for the playoffs in my opinion so uh just a couple of questionable decisions by the Islanders and you know I'm just shocked that the Penguins are winning the series so far because I had the Isles in five so that's just one thing I want to talk about I'm not shocked at all uh I yeah I, I personally had the Pens winning but like I would not have been surprised at all if the Isles got pulled it through. Uh, but uh, I think Dank said something about uh, the whole the whole lineup inst- instead of uh, their fourth line. And yeah. uh, what's his name again? Bully. Rodriguez. Yeah. Rodriguez. Rodriguez is a great four checker. He's a great. He's great on that third line, even though it came out of the Sherry deal. Mm-hmm. And CC is absolutely a fucking high risk, high low risk, high reward type of guy. Yeah, and you gotta keep in mind, I also don't have Lee, so you don't have that like stud score. Yeah, and Pens are shutting down Barzell. Yeah, and a big part of that is Sidney Crosby, who's been lights out this whole series. You can't ex- you can't expect more from him. He's been scoring. He's been playing with a lot of snarl. He's been playing insane defense at the end of games to like save uh, a lot of Pens games, including uh, the five four game. Oh. 5-4, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 5-4 game. The 2-1 game was just close all around. Uh, but, yeah, Sidney Crosby, we knew how good he is, and he's showing it. So. Yeah, he's giving the Pens the edge right now. Like, it's it's meant to be a close series. Yeah. Can... Yeah. yeah. One one thing I don't like is Guznetzel good, being edgy. That's what you don't need. Who? Guznetzel being a little chippy. He's... He's getting a little bit like a temper, yeah. and I saw like in like each of the games, you don't need that from Guzenzel. He needs to focus on scoring. Oh, you mean Gensel? Yeah. Gensel, Guzenzel. Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah, Gensel. Yeah, Gensel really hasn't been that impressive. I'm not like he's been scoring, I guess, but to me, he hasn't been that great. And you know, I, you know, Leo Komarov is on the four, first line making three yeah. and a half million. And you know you got to You know if he's on the first line, he's got to produce. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not that old. He's in his mid thirties. Um, you know, so he should he should be doing something, and he's not doing anything. Yeah, put Paul yeah, Mary the, on the first line. The veterans mm-hmm. probably uh, mostly have to produce. But... Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, say put Paul Mary in. That's true. Paul Mary, Paul Mary should be playing a lot more. Uh, uh, with Barzell, who's obviously the Islanders guy, they need him to be playing good. He's getting shut down. Jay mentioned it. He's he's. It's been really yeah. tough for him to score. He's has really tough competition because pretty much at any time he's out there, he's either against Crosby, he's either against Malkin, Jeff Carter, who's been absolutely amazing. So, it's it's really tough on him. And I don't know if I mean you kind of have to blame him because he's supposed to be that guy, but it's really tough to because. It's he's been in, put into a horrible situation. Abs- yeah. Yep. Absolutely no help because obviously Anders Lee is out too. So I'm just shocked you're not talking about how great Dumoulin's been. What was that? How great Dumoulin has been. Oh, Dumoulin. Dumoulin has been so. He's had such an underrated season. Yeah. Like when Russ committed that penalty, like in the last few minutes, Dumoulin absolutely shut down the penalty count, penalty power play. Yeah, the Islanders. Yeah, it's it it you need a big defenseman and the Pens have always had that bit of a problem with their injuries, either taking out their big defenseman or they're just not 
producing, but they have someone step up. Like we saw Ron Haynes, he was their number one guy at one point, and he did amazing, right? So yeah, uh, yeah. Justin Montreal Sh- legend. Yeah, Leafs legend. Uh, Justin Schultz did it too. So even with Latang out or things like that, it just they managed to find someone else to fill in the spot. And in this case is Brian Dumoulin. He's been amazing. All right, does anyone else have anyone, anything else to say about these guys? Like, who do you think is going to pull out the win in the end here? It's pro. I mean, <laughs> it depends what happens today. Um, if the Pittsburgh, if the Penguins win today, it, the series likely goes to the Pens. If the Isles win, they're still in it. So it's honestly, whoever wants it more. Like as yeah. I said, it's a it's a close series. Both teams are like almost as good as each other. They just need to put the effort. Yeah. For me, it's just if the Isles can play some very trot hockey, they can pull it off. But at the same time, is it enough to get past Sidney Crosby? And even Malkin's been been, been really good too. So, uh, well, I, I have to give it to the Pens, but it I just like I said, I won't be surprised if it goes either way. If yeah. if Jerry continues his form and Carter continues his hot streak, then gonna have, Pitt's gonna take it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Which series next are you going to next? Next game, um, hold on. Oh wait. Oh, we should probably what talk I, about the Panthers Lightning because that's happening right now. Oh yeah. Right. All right. You know we'll touch on on a little bit. Um, right now it's six two Lightning. Um, with five minutes left in the third, and it looks like Kucherov's injured, but he may be back. Whatever. Um, right now I'm on money puck, and I'm on the win deserve a meter, and right now the the Panthers. Have ninety eight percent, which means they should be absolutely ninety eight percent sure be winning this game. And I watched the goals. And I thought, you know what, Bobrovsky just sucks, but yeah. it, it, it is. It actually isn't a bop. All these goals are just are terrible defensive relapses. And I mean, I think we all knew coming in that Aaron Ekblad would be such a huge loss, like a huge loss for the Panthers, but. Well, yeah, it's it's really showing right here. Like this is just isn't good, and this is probably ending in five five games. Yeah, mm. we knew. Th- like 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 Shay said, you lose your number one defenseman, and that's never gonna go well for you. So, uh, th- I mean, they don't really have. I mean, they've had Wegar, who honestly, he's good. yeah, he he's, is he he's he's is really good. So, but then yeah. other than that, yeah, he, he right. handled right. so. All right. All right, I got two things. Okay. One, one, he should have put Drieger in at the start of the second. Yeah. That, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what he should have done. And two, do not count out Forsling. He is a great defenseman now lately. I don't know. Chicago gave up on him in the Tahan trade. And and three, we have another injury. We do? We do? To Tampa. Uh, who is – oh, Sukachev. Sergeyev, oh, that's a big loss. Oh, that's Sergeyev a big loss. Is, oh, I think he got injured in the in the check. I think Hornquist. Oh, oh no. Oh, Hornquist. Well, that's a big that's a big loss for Tampa because even if they win this game, which it looks like they're going to, there's like oh, three boy. minutes left. They've just lost two really really big parts of their team. So. Oh boy, I I said Hornquist it first. Hornquist getting gritty at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I mean, you have to... yeah, that's what you got to do. You're yeah. losing, so just make it hurt. But... That's, what, that's what you have to do, to be honest. Yeah. Like, they have to injure your star players. But I said, I think I said it to my other friend, if Tampa gets injured, they're done. Yeah. I mean, hey, but right now they, they all got Vasilevsky. Yeah, Vasilevsky is a big part. Oh, someone's going like, to gonna... take a run at Vasilevsky probably. It's going to end up being 2014 price again. Maybe. And, but you got to think that Tampa's got that on the mind. They're going to try to stop that no matter what, right? Yeah. But, you got to hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, for, Tam- in Tampa's, for Tampa, they can't lose Vasily. If that happens, it's over. Like, who are they going to play? McElhaney? We know that Tampa's not... Oh, yeah, we know that Tampa's not that great. They really aren't the best team without Vasily in that. So, if they lose yeah. him, that that's their playoff run over, pretty much. Yeah. I'm sure. All right, so we going back to the other games, or are we just gonna focus on this one? Or we're we... gonna go back to the other games. All right, so so game so the next game I have on here is Montreal Toronto oh game one. Oh boy! And before oh boy. we you know get into it, let's just hope that John Tavares is a speedy recovery, 
Because man, man, oh man, that, that he he did not look good when he slouched back, and thankfully he's discharged from the hospital. He's resting at home. Mm-hmm. He he's prob like he's out indefinitely. It's confirmed. Like he's probably missing the playoffs, and um, you know, let's just hope that his health, um, his health is all right because he has kids, he has a family, and you know, your life comes first before hockey. So let's just hope that he gets a good recovery. Yep, this situation okay. it's just he's bigger. Up for the series, right? Uh, for the series, for sure. Uh, so yeah. it's a concussion. So these things they yeah. can last two weeks. two weeks. They could last three months. But uh, who knows how bad it is? Because at the same time, if you get discharged after one day, that's actually a pretty good situation. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what happened to Patch Reddy. He he was yeah. out for I think good three four months. Yeah. So who knows what happens? But uh, from my experience, if you if you get discharged after one day, that uh, that usually means it's not the worst thing. But at the same time, I. They might have discharged me later because I'm a kid, first of all, and second of all, well, because yeah. I don't have medical staff watching over me, so who knows? Uh, but it, it's it's probably the best case scenario because he could have came out of this probably not being able to walk, not being able to move his hands. Yeah. Even worse than that, he could have been dead. Could have a so neck injury. Yeah. He could. He could have been. Fading. Yeah, he could have been dead. So it's probably the best case scenario, and they sh- they are is no way they're going to rush him back in any way. He there's a chance there's no chance for this series. At- no, he's gone for the series. Yeah. He's probably out for round 2. Yeah, I think the is- earliest he returns is round 3. Yeah, I got to agree with that. Like near the end of round 3 or round 2 or round 3, something like that. Well, if the, if it happens at all. So well, and also, saw the injury. I'm going to say that- one thing. Oh yeah, sure. Is that um Flingo, as much as I love him, he should have fought for Rot. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it should have been Corey Perry. It was, it was not Sherrod. You know what? Especially, especially when Sherrod's going out to Matthews. Yeah, you know, like he yeah. is an attack. He is an antagonizer. You know what? For a guy that knows Corey Perry well, when he played in Anaheim, you know we've been in the same division. As much as I despise him, you can't blame Perry on that play. Like yeah. that's purely, pure, purely accidental. Yeah, and it's just a terrible result. Yeah, it just feels bad. And I understand Felino's reasoning. Uh, yeah, it completely makes sense. But uh, at the same time, he might have fought the wrong guy. Oh, oh! Breaking news: There's oh. a brawl. There's a brawl. Oh. Of course, it's a brawl. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, that game's breaking down. Um, just one thing on Tavares. Um, it's also confirmed that he has a a knee injury. A knee injury. Knee injury too. That was and from Sherrod. Oh. That was from Sherrod. That was from. So Sherrod. either way, he was going to be out, and just yeah, just yeah. Oh, he's injured both ways. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Sh- I'm going to guess the knee injury was from Chirac because it does look yeah. like there was some knee contact there. So that dirt, that hit when I first saw it, I was like, yeah, that's fine. But now that I'm looking at it more and more, it might be a bit dirty, but who knows. Uh, I- and we all know Carey Price in the playoffs. Yeah, he was abs- he-, he was amazing. He- like, I-, I-, I, gotta- I think we can agree that the Leafs were probably the better team in that game. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. if it if it wasn't for that like one minute after the uh, like right after the Tavares incident, there was they were completely shocked. Like their their best player, one of the best players in the world, is on the verge of tears, uh, and he's expected to go out and play right away. So that's yeah pretty impossible, and they get scored on. But if we take that if we take that part out, it's a one one game with a goal that. Is com- that is completely insane. That Paul Byron goal is completely yeah. insane. That's never gonna happen that was again. A, that was that, that was that was an amazing goal. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. I was happen shocked again. when that went in. Yeah, exactly. It's never gonna would happen. But they left again. the penalty shot? Uh, it wouldn't have been a penalty yeah. shot. It would have been if it was if he didn't score, it no. would have been a power play. Uh, okay, so So he, they barely won that game, the Montreal Canadiens, and with what just happened to the Leafs, the mat they played the way they played then then with one man down and the the immediate they're shock, captain. yeah, they're captain, yeah. one of their best players, and the shock. I, I might be a bit optimistic here, which is like I can't do. I'm a Leafs fan. I, I'm scared of literally every everything. Uh, yeah, but I, I am, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty optimistic that they're gonna win this for their captain. I still, I'm still think that Leafs are gonna win because simply because you gotta realize that Montreal is. It's the same thing with Montreal. Even though player price is godly, they they still it's the same injury Brown has that we know. And Evans just got hurt as well. 
Yeah, I mean, like, KK is yeah. uh, K- 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 going in for him, right? Yeah, yeah. Which isn't so, the worst like, thing, so. But... Isn't the worst thing, but like, it, it, if this trend goes on like exactly as it goes, like we're gonna be like the same like, way we are like, in towards the end of the season, just all injured. Yeah, and at the same time, and also just looking at that game, it even even after what Toronto just went through, they they took it to the Habs really hard. If it wasn't for Carey Price, that would have been a Leafs win no matter what, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I told and I told everyone in Discord, like even when Price had a bad age show game, I was like, guys, do not count to out playoff carry Price. Yep. I, I was gonna just say that um both like of the Toronto goals were off I think were off of turnovers that turned into like fast breaks. Oh, Joe Thornton. I can't believe he is still in the lineup. Like I understand from Keith's perspective, that guy is even older than you, more experienced than you as their coach. And it's gonna be so hard to take him out, but come on, not man. Giving Nash like, a chance. I thought like, Nash right there. I remember when Dorch was on the first line. I mean, that works. <laughs> that worked, to be fair. Right, but... I don't know why he's I mean, on the power play. If, I mean, I like that fourth yeah, line. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I, I, I love a fourth line of Dorch and Spezza Simmons. That's like uh, that's like almost 2,000 games of experience right there. It's more, yeah. So... Like, you need those gritty veterans. And Simmons, Spezza, Dorch and brings that. But, I mean... At some point, you you gotta put in speed. Like I feel bad for Galchenyuk. I really do. Yeah, like, Galchenyuk, he, Galchenyuk is I on the second like daily face off. Yeah, he's in. He's All on right, the second. He's on the second. So the lineup now with Galchenyuk. Out, I didn't expect this. I didn't know that Felino played center, which he does apparently. He does. Yeah. So yeah. Felino, yeah. Felino, he's gonna be the second line center with Galchenyuk and Nylander. And we know how well Galchenyuk and Nylander play together. So yeah, hope that works yeah. out. The third line. Okay. Now has Engvall in it instead of instead of Nash for some reason, and the fourth line is staying the same. So I don't understand why Nash came out. He did exactly what we wanted him to. He was amazing on that penalty kill. Like the Leafs' penalty kill was absolutely amazing with all the puck over the glass penalties. Yeah, they killed those off, and Nash was a big part of that. Uh, and nothing happened when he was on the ice, which is exactly what you want out of that kind of player. But now he's coming out, and Joe Thornton is still in, and I don't understand why, because th- those two goals were his fault. Like, I understand you could put it on Sandine, maybe, for not being that fast, which, I mean, Sandine's never been the best skater. Sandine, Sandine yeah, has a lot of room to grow, though. Yeah, so, like, I, and also, Bogo did not have a good game, either. That first goal, you gotta, I understand that what just happened to him, but you got, you gotta put that on him. And uh, I've been advocating... For to keep Dermot and Sandine together, for, like since Bogo came back, I've been saying that 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 mm-hmm. pair hasn't done one thing wrong. There's no reason to yeah. split them up. So, yeah, sure. and and we know how good Dermot is defensively. That matches San, it like balances Sandine's offensive capability. So, I it doesn't look like it's gonna change from the practice lineups, but I really mm-hmm. wished it did. But you know, I'm gonna say one thing that um Gauchi. I'm looking forward to him stepping up against his former team. Yeah, and he yeah, yeah. He, he has the he has the line mates to do it. I mean, Felino and Nylander, especially who's been our who's been the Leafs. Actually, maybe Riley. Riley and Nylander were the two Le- Leafs' two best players. So he, he's got this. He's got the tools around him to do it. So he's gonna have to step up. Every single player on the Leafs is gonna have to step up now that Tavares has gone, because that's a big player to lose. Yeah. All right. So I think we've talked about that one for long enough. Unless anyone has anything else to say. No. Uh, just I just want to say one thing. I feel like, in my opinion, like I I, I know Matthews had a four goal season. He he was amazing this season. But you know when Matthews was out for games this year, the Leafs played exceptionally well defensively, and a lot of that came from John Tavares. I I am curious to see um, how the Leafs play without Tavares for a whole game, and if it impacts them more than you know if Austin Matthews is out. Because I mean, a lot of these star players in the league, besides you know um, Sidney Crosby, those guys, Bergeron, you know they don't have the best you know defensive awareness per se. Um, and so and in the playoffs, you got to play a hard, grindy game. So I'm in, I'm just interested to see how they actually play a full game without Tavares. Yeah, and that is a good point because Tavares he has such an he has had it such an underrated season. Like his point scoring's been there; he's around point per game, and but his defensive game has been amazing. He's been playing the t- every single team's top pair, uh, top line, um, and he's been playing them really well. Uh, 
But at the same time, when when Matthews went down, I think Hyman was also down. So that's one of your that's probably your best defensive forward down. So he's back now. So I'm gonna guess that probably helps Matthews' line's uh, defense. So we'll see what happens. But it, it's it's definitely gonna be tough with Tavares out, regardless. Yeah. All right. What series are we moving on to now? Capitals Bruins. E- oh, yeah, I got Caps Bruins here. Man, this series has been fun to watch. Yeah, honestly. They've all been close games, which is awesome to see too. Yeah. OT nonstop. So, uh, but and then I do. I think we gotta address the uh what Ov was doing with Samsonov, and I think that's completely uncalled for. Yeah. Like Sam, uh, like it's a, he's a rookie and Samsonov held him in that game. There was he was the only reason that was close. Yeah. Yeah. Was it confirmed he was the owner of Samsonov? Yeah, yeah. It, that's some some Russian guy translated it to uh, uh, wake up B word. Obi, but you gotta realize Obi plays his heart out, and he expects his team to like play like the same way he plays as well. Well, Samsonov was better than him that game. He was the most important exactly. player. Exactly, but like he, when he sees that that simple mistake, he will like. I don't blame him. I. Do not like it, but like I understand it. Yeah. Like I understand that like he's dedicated to the game, and that is what you and he's expecting Samson to be like the stud. But and he made like a big mistake, and of course he's gonna get his head at the same long, time yelled at. At the same time, this is talking as a goalie, so I might be a bit biased here, but I, his job is to just stop the puck behind the net and let his defenseman go for it. His defenseman didn't go for it. Exactly. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Who was it again? Uh, I think it was Schultz. Schultz. Yeah. Schultz. Yeah. He just left the puck there, uh, which he's supposed to do. Because if he tries to uh, wire it around, he's got no defenseman there. So he leaves it there for his defenseman to go get, and his defenseman just skates around to the corner. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, it's not even his fault. So, and, I, and when your goalie uh, makes a mistake, uh. They got a bunch of other. That's the toughest position in sport, probably. So when you when they've made a mistake, they got everything on them. Everyone, every goalie's mistake is is so. What's the word? Exaggerated. Yeah. It makes yeah. the biggest difference when they make a mistake. That can be the game right there. So mm-hmm. I don't know if shouting at them is the best way to. Um, Fix yes. that problem because I think Samsonov knows that what's what what just happened. Uh, oh, yeah. You don't need to make it worse for him. Is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's actually talk about the games now. Sorry. <laughs> it's fun. Um, I just I, I just think that I kind of I knew I had a feeling that Washington would be an early exit. I just do not trust their goaltending. Boston's top six, their defense. Well, not really defensively, but. Their, their forwards and their goaltending are just amazing. And, you know, I, I just knew it was going to be a qu- quick, quick series for the Bruins. Um, you know, and that's what they're showing right now. Yeah, like the Bruins can get it done. They have the balance between defense and offense, and we know Rask in them is just the best. I'm going to say something right now. It's, it's either... Jensen, uh, we watching this first first period, and they do a terrible job, like just leaving, just leaving Samson off in the, like fucking Samson off in the dust. They just unguard, they just leave forwards unguarded. It's 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 terrible. Like Jensen, who's supposed to be guarding, I'm pretty sure it's like Richie or Hall. Like they they just leave they just leave them like wide open or leave Hall to screen the goalie. It's it's terrible yeah yep and it's playoff hockey so the refs are i don't know the refs are gonna be a bit more lax on what the what players can do in front of the net so you've got to be tough you got to clear out the you got to clear it out because if 90 percent of times probably more 95 percent of times if a goalie can see the puck they're gonna stop it these are these are nhl goalies so if you can if if they have the sight line uh, they're gonna stop it. So you have to give them that sight line. That's the defenseman's job. Yeah. Uh, so if the Caps aren't gonna do that, that makes Sam Sano's job pretty much impossible. So, yeah. All right. 
Um, next, I guess we just go to the next game. All right. Um, so our next game was a double OT game, Nashville and Carolina, and this was such a good game. Mm-hmm. Like this was an exciting game with the fans too. Like, yeah, was- yeah, yeah. Nashville had amazing fans that night. They, they were rocking. Um, you know. I was kind of cheering for Nashville this game. I, you know, I don't think they've actually kind of played bad this series. I just think Carolina is just such a good team. Yeah. It's not their fault they got put into a into a situation where they're playing uh, one of the cup favorites. So yeah. Uh, so with what they've been given, they've done really good. That second game that was fun to watch, and they pulled out the win. So, or sorry, third game. Crap. But yeah. That, so that's what you want out of them. They they play yeah. hard, and even though they're going against a better team, they're able to pull out wins like that once in a while. And if you can get a bit lucky, you can get a couple games like that. And then once you got past Carolina, you've eliminated probably your... Actually, no, that's the lie. One of your biggest uh, issues uh, until you get to the finals, right? So, yeah. Carolina, sometimes I felt like they gave players like that. Too much of a chance with like taking too much from Ace. Like they, the Nashville's got to capitalize on that. Yeah, I mean the Nashville power play's been pretty bad all season. I and mean it's been bad since twenty nineteen playoffs. Remember yeah. they went like over it's, twenty against Dallas. It's mm-hmm. been it's been bad since it's been bad for a long time. But like if if they want to like pull up an upset of a lifetime, like and Carolina's giving you like a power play chance, you have to take it. Yeah, yeah they took seven penalties last, like, but, game two. But, like, with John Hines, I do not believe they're going to take – John Hines the coach, I don't believe they're going to get that chance because he's such a bad coach. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in a lot of cases, when a team is uh, performing above expected, it's because they have a coach that's doing such a good job. In this case, it's just all the players. They're giving it their all uh, while they have a coach that is pretty – pretty. Bra- we've talked about him before. He is pretty trash, so – yeah, yeah. You gotta give props to the players in Nashville. They are doing an amazing job. You know, good for Duchesne for finally stepping up and scoring. Though. Yeah, you know, he needs to show his worth for that eight mil contract. Yeah, and we know what he's capable of. He's been a ama- he's been a really good player before, so he's just got to keep on yeah. doing it. I'm just I'm just glad Montreal didn't take him. <laughs> <laughs> Ten million. Jesus. Uh, all right. So. Anyone else have anything to say about that series? It would be a lot better for Ross who's here. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. We we could get a lot to talk about, but Rossi, uh, what did Rossi have to do? He's yeah, like, he's going uh, to his uh, dad's house. Oh yeah, his dad's house, right? So yeah, that didn't uh, work out for his schedule. Anyways, uh, we got one more series. Oh, two more series to talk about. Yeah. I wanted to leave. Uh, I want to talk about this one because I want to leave the last one for last because this is yeah. really surprising me. Golden Knights versus Wild, first of all. Let's get to that. Um, It's been a pretty solid series so far. I mean, it's uh, it's been it's two on uh, Vegas right now, but it's, it's right. been pretty one-sided, I think. Yeah, I'll do that. Like that one game where Minnesota won, it was in OT 1-0. That's, that's not going to happen a lot. Uh, Every other game, I think that Vegas has been by far the better team. And, you know, I, you know, Tab is making the saves he needs to. Um, you know, Kaprizov has been, you no, know, hasn't been good, but I mean, he's a rookie in the playoffs. Like, yeah. You know, I, I'm not gonna damper too much on him, but you know, um, they need to play Zach Parise. Like, I get it, he sucks now, he's overpaid, but he's a playoff guy. Mm-hmm. Have you like he was so clutch for the Devils back in 2012? Yeah. He was amazing. Like even the last couple of runs the Wild had, Parise was there to score the goals. Yep. So you need him to play. Like, I, I mean, I get it. Bad contract, but that does that shouldn't matter. He's, play your best players. And he's one of their best players in the playoffs. Yeah, it's yeah. Game. yeah it's, gonna... it's two different seasons. Like, we, we yeah. you see, you see it all the time. Like, we saw it with Josh Anderson. This guy had less points than Jason Svetza in the pre, in the regular season, and he was an absolute beast in uh, the uh, in the first game right he's, he's yeah. a playoff type guy yep he is a guy yeah he's built for the playoffs uh that's why nick felino was uh was worth so much he might have been a bit, a bit of an overpay there but still he was worth a lot because he's a player that's built for the playoffs so it like chase said you got to give someone a 
Parise is a playoff performer. <laughs> Oh, and you got to give him his time to be able to his chance to be able to make a difference because they need it right on the, now. On the Vegas side, they're going to say one thing. I think the reason why they lost because they didn't play Tuck on the first line. They played Nosek. Why did they play and, Thomas Dosek? I know, right? And, and and they switched it up in the they switched it up and played Tuck on the first line with Stephenson and Stone. Yeah, I mean he's perfect to play on that line. Like there's. It's no one's. It's a tough line. No one's gonna score on them, and they got a lot of offensive upside too. So, I just don't think you put Stone with him though, because Stone needs to get going. He hasn't really done that until now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just they just gotta just keep the injuries out of the way because Krebs is Krebs is out. It's not only Patrick, it's Krebs, who's he's a rookie, but he can provide a lot to his team. And you lose any of big guys like Marsh is old. Especially doing the the wingers, you you're done. Yeah, and hey, one thing to say about Vegas, Mark Andre Fleury is a beast, man. I yeah, I, I don't understand how he keeps on doing this. Uh, like he wasn't the greatest last game, but before that, he is not the reason they lost in in the first game for sure. And right, he, he was amazing in game two. So I they uh they got they got a goaltender there, so they have. To, they now they just got to figure everything else out, uh, which it looks like they have. Tuck's got to keep on going the way he's going. Stone's got to get going. So, if that happens, Vegas is up there for a cup again. One thing I want to add is, yeah, as um, Shea was saying, like Minnesota's offense hasn't been there. Like the defense, it's meh. Like the scoring is not much, but like. They they have a chance if their offense starts going. Yeah, and that is largely dependent on Kaprizov in the in the regular season, which and that and like Shay said, he's a rookie, so it's gonna be tough for him. But in, in the regular season, he was a main he was one of the main parts of their offense, so they're gonna need him to step up, even though he's a rookie. So it's a lot to put on him. They're also relying on like Greenway and Erickson that who's most Erickson is mostly defensively. Yeah. And that's a mostly defensive line, the Flingo Greenway Eck line. Yeah, they 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 are a defensive team, right? So they got to find some way to score. Um, does anyone else have anything to say about that series? Not really. I just I did, I think they're playing game four tomorrow, so that should be a good one. I'm excited to watch that. Yep. And Johansson's out, so yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. The hand the. Famous quote that I shouldn't repeat because this is going on YouTube. <laughs> All right. So, last series, uh, the Jets versus the Oilers. Yeah. And this has been a huge surprise oh, for right. me. So, we have our That's resident... Yeah, we have our resident Jets fan and our resident Oilers fan. So, we're just going to let them talk. All right, Dink? All right. Go ahead, boys. Well, shit, you could start molding. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your mouth, dude. This is going on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't, I don't even know anymore. Like, I'm, I am, I'm just not even surprised. Like, you know, I thought this year was gonna be different, but yeah, um, Hellbuck is Hellbuck, um. Their defense is just shutting everyone down because they're blocking shots. Um, I will say this: the only two players who actually stepped up this, like game one and game two, are two best players consistently have been Mike Smith, who, um, I'm just gonna say right now, I do not blame him for that goal. He had oh. Dmitry Kulikov and Adam Larson a double screen block him. Dmitry Kulikov is like six foot three. Adam Larson is like six foot four. Right, that, that's a double screen, and yeah. Coral, you play goalie, so you know how hard that actually is to stop. Mm -hmm. It was tip and, two, wasn't it? Pardon? Was it tip two? I thought there was a redirect. It was tip. It went off of like a defenseman or whatever. Yeah, so that's about yeah. Awful. I think it went off like or someone. So anyone that says this is Mike Smith's fault, uh, you're not watching the games because Mike yeah. Smith has consistently been, in my opinion, our second best player this season. Um, like Drysdale has been great. Yep, Big David, of course, whatever. But no, Mike Smith has consistently throughout the entire regular season two has been our best player, which is weird to say, which means you're going to bring him back for like six mil next year. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesse Pugliarvi has also been our best player. And not just because he scored in game one. He's just 
you just watch Mouthy, he's just all the little things right. He is so good defensively, and he has the confidence to finally skate through the defense and shoot the puck. He's been great, and I'm so happy they brought them back. Yeah. But, man, every, everyone else, uh, Tyson Berry, um, yeah. let's go. Two more games, and we're, then he's gone, because, because uh, yeah, we're getting swept. Uh, the bottom six, man. Like, I, if you are, if you're in the Discord server, by the way, Tundra Discord server, um, you you know, uh, you know how much repeatedly I've said this bottom six isn't good enough. This is why we should have added at the deadline in the weakest draft year ever. And with Connor McDavid gaining 100 points in 56 games, you don't think this was the year to go all in? You know, Taylor Hall was right there for Bjork in a second round pick. Hell, I would have paid the first round pick to get Nick Foligno. Yep. But, uh, yeah, just sit back and do nothing, not add to your team. You know, Taylor Hall could have been useful in Game 2. Hell, maybe even Game 1. Um, you know, and I blame, you know, yes, it's, 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 it's on the players for not, you know, giving, it their, giving, it, giving their all because they're playing like a regular season hockey right now, um, especially Zach Cashton. Uh, like, he, like, Zach had – in the last six playoff games, and I'm counting playing games because – it's gonna actually help my, uh, gonna help my point here. McDavid has ten more hits credited than Zach Cassian. Oof. Zach Cassian played nine minutes last game. Mm. He's making three point two million. Three point two million. How many years? Holland gets three more years left. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. That was that. That's been Holland's worst move by far as the GM of the team, and. Um, you know, this all season is really going to define if Ken Holland is fit for our team. We have 28 million cap space. Right now, the rumors news could sign here for five and a half at five years. And if that's the case, holy shit, uh, you sign that deal right away. Because um, people are going to say he's having an off year. He's actually on pace for 26 goals in the 82 game season. So that's the and it's just it's just his, the, his assists haven't been there. And that's because Tyson freaking Barry gets secondary <laughs> on the power play. And when he shoots the puck, he hits the net. He doesn't even hit the net, but I digress. Um... You know, Yamamoto just has been off this season, which, I mean, no, I didn't expect him to be point per game as he was last season. I've been okay with Yamamoto this year. I'm not really too worried about him so far. I mean, he's a small guy, so you, you expect him, you know, to get rocked around, which is fine. Um, Like, our best bottom six guy, you know, is Tyler Ennis, and guess what, Tip? It's not playing him. Yeah, that, that is a really big problem. We've seen how big of an impact Tyler, Tyler Ennis can have since his exactly. resurgence back in Toronto, and... He, uh, the fact that he's being held out of the lineup for this bottom six, which has not been able to do anything at all the whole season, yeah. uh, is absolutely insane to me. So, a few and things it, I want to add. All right. Um. So the defense, um, surprisingly showing up in the playoffs. Didn't think it was gonna happen, but somehow it did. And yeah, as you said, Hel- Hellebuck is Hellebuck, but not like. Usually in the regular season, I would say Hellebuck is just like just getting left out to dry. I mean, he's winning games, so I can't really say that. But like, and then like what I'm saying is the defense doesn't doesn't really help out in the regular season. But Morrissey and Forbert they put their game on, and these two games been really close, really low scoring. Yeah. So so really helping out. Yeah, I did not expect of all the teams in the playoffs right now. I did not expect this series to have a zero-zero overtime game. So it's shocking for everyone. Yeah, like these two guys, they're all about off. These two teams are all about offense. The best offensive player maybe ever in the NHL is on the uh, the uh, Edmonton Oilers, and the, and Tyson Berry is on the Edmonton Oilers, and the and we all know how bad the Jets' defense is usually. Not now, obviously, yeah. for some reason. Yeah. And. Uh, and it managed to go to 0-0, and that is up to the goalies who have been absolutely amazing this series, both of them. I just I just want to add, like, just one thing. I think the reason why, like, Edmonton's defense is, like, a, at least, like, the defense is somewhat better is because they got Coke. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Koki Coke in, the, in cuckoo. like, the bo- cuckoo. Oh, cuckoo. And it's yeah. a bottom player, and he is a great depth guy to have. Yeah. He is. I, I was I jealous. Like I was jealous I was just... of get of getting Cuckoo because he is an amazing player. For what he's for what he's uh meant to do, he does it perfectly and he does more. Yeah. So uh... And you know, Cuckoo and Bear has been such a good pair together. Like I mean, Ethan Bear had a really rough start to the season. He had that concussion, but ever since then he's been locked down solid. And 
I'm just po- I'm pointing the fingers to the boomers that actually think Tyson Bear is a good defenseman, which yeah, um, mm. no, he isn't. No, no. And you know, just back to our bottom six, like our best player, because I said it was Ennis, but he's not playing. Our best player actually has been Ryan McLeod, and when a rookie has been your best defense, uh, no, so your best bottom six guy, and he's playing three C, that's that's not good. Yeah. Mm. Okay, this they should have gone Ryan. He's a great defensive guy yeah. for the Flames. I want Derek Ryan, but... Um, I think he was going to go for cheap, maybe. There was a chance he like, could have gone for cheap, yeah. Like, I just... A part of me, even though, I mean, I, I love... To, I, even though it's my team and all, like, a part of me just just wants us to get swept because there's been underlying issues all season. And, you know, I, cut, I kept my mouth shut and I was like, you know what, it's almost playoff time. You know? Things could change in the playoffs. Maybe Zach Cass can do his thing, but no, obviously that's not going to happen. You know, maybe I mean James Neal has been all right. I think he's actually been decent in the playoffs. He hasn't been amazing. He hasn't been, but he hasn't been terrible. I mean, which which are both kind of whatever. But um, yeah, man, I just you know for ever since like it's actually it's been ex- almost exactly two years since the Oilers hired Dave Tippett, and let me tell you. I I really hated that hiring since day one. I was like, this is going to be McClellan 2.0. And I was like, when you have the best player in the world in Connor McDavid, you shouldn't really hire a strict, you know, boom defensive coach that doesn't use analytics. Because I'm telling you, a lot of these coaches and these GMs on these amazing teams are using analytics. Shadow Keefe uses analytics. Kyle Dubas uses analytics. Um, yeah, Eiserman. Eiserman uses analytics. Eiserman, yeah. And like, even, like, even though the Detroit's a bad team, Eiserman uses analytics. Like, um, who else? Uh, Sackix. Mike Sullivan uses analytics, and uh, Ron Hexall. Like all these damn good teams use analytics, and the analytics show you that Barry's trash. And guess what? Barry's trash. The analytics show you Zach Cassian shouldn't get paid three point two million, and that he's just a bottom, a fourth liner. Guess what? They're right. Like you know, I get, I get the things with the eye test. Like the eye test matters more than what a computer tells you. A computer also tells you a lot of good information that. Your eyes can't show you. Yep. It's about putting them together. And if having just one of them isn't going to work and putting them together, you can, if like if you just look at one, you love Castian because he's just like a big guy. He hits people, which he hasn't yeah. been doing lately. And uh, Barry, he's getting points. He's an offensive defenseman. That's great. He's, but he's also paired with McDavid half the time. Yeah. But he's I, like, like he's, he's guaranteed points that you get with McDavid. Yeah. But here's the thing. People don't realize that McDavid, Barry actually slows down McDavid because when Barry has the puck, because Barry's not the fastest guy, so Barry either can't rush up the puck fast enough to McDavid, or when he passes or shoots it, it goes wide because he can't do anything right. So, um, you know, thankfully it's confirmed that he's testing the market, so we can allow Evan Bouchard, an actual good defenseman, to actually play these games. <laughs> and you know what? I just please, I just want Tippa gone. Like, I. I, uh, mm-hmm. I, f- I forgot who said it in Discord. I think it was Mike. Shout out to Mike, by the way. Um, in Ira. They're like, they're like I, I feel bad because this team should be way better. And, you know, they have a good top six. It's It actually isn't a bad top six. It's just the bottom six that sucks. And when we have bottom six players right there on the taxi squad, like Tyler Ennis, hell, you could bring up Dylan Holloway. You know, he's probably actually close to age already. You have Tyler Benson in the NHL. When you have these guys right there that can play in your bottom six and you're not using them, and you're playing guys like Alex Damn Chase on 30 <laughs> minutes a night. Like, Jeez. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I just, I just, I just I was, can't. And I was, Jansen's a great power play guy, but he, other than that, he's trash. He's trash. Like, I, I, I just, I just can't. And. This like we play tomorrow, then we play Monday. So realistically speaking, this you, your this season could be done by Monday. And listen, Connor McDavid, we made the playoffs, right? That's which is good. You know, even if you get swept, you have that argument. Hey, we made the playoffs. There you go. But with Connor McDavid, you it, you, it should you shouldn't be happy about just making the playoffs. You're expected to win, and to win, you don't put McDry together when the rest of your team doesn't but, have enough depth. That like. Tip it, man. I, I I've been calling for his head all season, or all season, and uh, you know this this just goes to show he isn't a good head coach anymore. He was great in Arizona because that team had no stars. This team has stars. You can't put a Barry Trotz coach type guy with Connor McDavid. That's just not going to work. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully they fire him on Monday because uh, I hope we get swept. You know what? Every time the Jets score, I'm like, let's go. 
<laughs> you know, because I, I, I'm going to still be cheering for my guys, but you know what, the Jets score, I'm like, okay, that's, that's good. Because I, I want this series to be over. Because it just this, this, this series is showing our true weakness. And Tippett gets, Tippett's getting out coach. Um, he, he's 100% getting out coach. And he his in-game adjustments just suck. He's not the – he sucks at in-game adjustments. Like, the halfway through the game, they took off Pugliardi, who, like I said, has been our best player. And he put Zach Cassian on the first line, who's done nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. so, like, oh, my God. It's, like, I'm, like I, now you guys realize how bad of a coach he is. Like, I, I, just, I just can't. I – I am, I, yeah, I, I'm not happy. I, just, I can go on too, but that I want to say that for another podcast. Yeah, we can yeah. definitely do another podcast on on the on the Oilers because it is a bad situation there. Yeah. All right. So we kept it a lot shorter than the last time, which thank God for my computer. Um, <laughs> just want to add one more thing. Okay. About Winnipeg. All right. This defense. Do not count this defense out. Demelo and. Demello and Demello is actually a good two-way guy, yeah. And and um, Stanley is actually good with apparently a good offensive defenseman. Yeah, Stanley has been really yeah, impressive. Too. Like he can hit. Yeah, he's been really impressive. I did not expect. Like I always knew Logan Stanley was going to be something because uh, the guy has a lot of mobility for his size, a lot of offensive skill for his size. But I didn't expect him to be this good right. Uh, his first season in the NHL. So, yeah. Props and to him. Pullman, and Pullman apparently has good defensive numbers. Oh. According to Pullman's amazing. It's just just look at Jay. He's a big Pullman fan. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that's all. If, I, if anyone doesn't want to add anything. That should be it. Yeah. Awesome. Well... Uh, we're gonna be back once again to do another recap, probably at the end of this. Uh... Probably mid midweek. Yeah, midweek, something like that. We'll find time to do another recap. We'll try to keep it short again because I think this was better than last time in terms yeah. of time. But I'm sure, th- but the last episode was fun. But uh, I think that's gonna be all. So thank you everyone for listening to another episode of the Tundra Cast, and we will see you next time.